when I'm reviewing a show. I like to be fair. I like to be kind. I like to be welcoming and I like to celebrate because theatre is something that I love. I love theatre. It is my passion. It is everything that I love and adore. When I leave a show, even shows this year that I haven't liked, that I have reviewed negatively, I've still left in a good mood. Orlando is the first show that I have ever walked out of the theatre and just felt awful. Orlando is the biggest missed opportunity of a show that I have ever seen. But why is this? Today, I'm going to explore why I hated Orlando. But if you haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Ellie. I talk about theatre. I do reviews, I do discussions, I do video essays. I'm normally a bubble of energy and really positive. This video probably isn't going to be that. And I implore you to go and watch one of my videos that are where I speak positively because those are the videos that I want to uplift. Those are the videos that I, I love the most. But this is also important and I'm someone who is honest and I'm someone who needs to speak honestly about this show. So if you do enjoy this video and the others on my channel and you enjoy theatre, please consider hitting like and subscribing. It really helps me out and helps out the channel. But let's talk about Orlando. Orlando is a show that, as the marketing states, feels contemporary. The novel was originally written in 1928 and as we look back on it now and we think about it now, the questions of identity and who are we have become more and more prevalent, especially within my community, the trans community. Orlando is a show about feminism, about gender roles and the restrictions of women in the past. It is about a man who falls asleep and wakes up the next day as a woman. This show, from that description, should completely and utterly speak to me. However, this play feels like it doesn't tackle any of these really interesting themes that come up with a story that is framed like this. Let's talk about these two themes, the themes of gender and the themes of feminism. Let's start with gender. I am trans. I am someone who has lived my life as a man and as a woman. I have seen firsthand the differences of how you are treated, even in a modern society, as a man and as a woman. This should be a trans story, but is a trans story in reverse. Because Orlando is not a trans character. They are the reverse of a trans character. They are someone who wakes up one day completely changed. How would this affect them? What kind of dysphoria would they feel? How would they hold themselves? How would they see themselves in a body that is completely different to their brain? And yet, the play doesn't explore any of this. The text doesn't even talk about this. Orlando is just as confident in a male body as a female body. It feels a bit like a missed opportunity here. There could have been a lot of really interesting exploration of how much would change. And then we can lead into the idea of feminism here. Because it's not just the body changing, it's also Orlando's status. Orlando finds themselves in a place and a society where suddenly all of the stuff that they were promised to inherit they can no longer own because they're a woman now. They can't vote, they have no freedom, they have to get married to a man. And the play tells us this, sure. The play talks about it, but the play doesn't explore how Orlando really feels about this. Orlando just dresses up as a man and everything's fine. There's so many interesting questions. Not only if you look at this from a trans perspective, if you look at this just from what's delivered, there's so many questions here about feminism, about roles in society and how someone who hasn't grown up with these roles would feel if suddenly everything changed and all these roles were suddenly forced onto them. And yet it just, it doesn't explore any of this. Something that looks contemporary from the get-go feels contemporary is not explored at all in a contemporary way. And then we get on to casting. Now, it was a big deal to cast Emma Corrin in this show. Because by casting someone who is non-binary, 
By casting a Makurin, you immediately plant the seeds in people's minds and in trans people's minds that this show is going to tackle it from a trans perspective. But this show doesn't. This show is written by a cis man and it's been directed by a cis man. So why have you cast Emma Corrin? If you're not going to bother to explore this in any way to do with transness, why have you cast Emma Corrin? More so, why have you not cast the entire show with non-binary actors? The staging and the ideas of this show feel like it should have been staged with a full non-binary cast. It feels like the themes and the ideas of this show are there, but are held back a little bit because of how they've cast it. What's more, I think this cast is too big for this show. We have nine different people playing Virginia Woolf and a couple of little side roles here and there which honestly could have probably been played by two different actors constantly multi-rolling. This play feels like more of a commentary on Virginia Woolf herself than the character of Orlando, and because of this, Orlando feels like a very two-dimensional character. They are a person who is constantly asking themselves throughout the entire show who they are. And this question is fine, this theme is fine, as long as we get to know who Orlando is. We don't get to know who Orlando is at all. And because of that, I have nothing to relate to Orlando with. I have no kind of sense of who Orlando is as a person, what they like, what they dislike. I'm told that they like wine at the end of the show. There's nothing in there to tell me that they like wine, except for the fact that they're just telling me that they like wine. They go through this massive journey, this entire thing that is uprooted and changed their entire life, and I don't know how they feel about this. But it doesn't really go into these questions and how it subconsciously tackles them or, or affects them in any kind of way. And yet we get a lot of commentary on Virginia Woolf's life, we learn about how she died, we see her writing this story, and the way that they've done it just feels odd because there's more focus on her than Orlando. But let's move on now to talk about some of this staging. Because it feels like a GCSE drama piece. Normally, if I don't like a show itself, I can at least praise some elements of the staging and the ideas here, but it just feels so basic. It feels like we get nine Virginia Wolves just because they wanted a bigger cast. It feels like they were forced to have nine Virginia Wolves. I don't understand why we have them. I don't understand what the play is trying to say with this. And it's not like the imagery of the staging is any more interesting. We get quite a simplistic approach. The stage is really bare with only a couple of little bits of set rolled on here, there and everywhere. It's dark, it's bare. The most interesting image that we get in the entire show is all of the Virginia Woolf surrounding Orlando in one scene. And even that's a moment that lasts for one second and is, is just slightly visually interesting. And everything with this staging feels quite surface level. It could have been really interesting for Orlando not to change physically at all. They stay in their minds seeing themselves and dressing themselves in the exact same way. But instead have everyone around them address them in a completely different way. But instead we just get a very matter-of-fact way of seeing it, where the transformation happens and it's just Orlando with tits now. There's so much more that you could explore here and ideas that you could dive into with the direction and with the staging. And these ideas are right there. They feel like they are right there, but the play doesn't even skim them. I wish I could sit here and praise this show, but there is nothing in here that connected with me on any way. All of these really interesting things about the show feel like they're not explored. And the reason that this hurts so much is because it's all right there. It feels obvious. This should be a trans story. Hell, the marketing says this is a trans story. But it's very clear that the people working on this didn't really care. Do you want the biggest thing? 
that told me that they don't really care? You have cast your lead. Your lead is non-binary. And you haven't even bothered to put pronouns in your program. You can't even put a they them next to Emma's name to stop the audience misgendering them. There's nothing in the front of this program that really dives into a trans perspective. There's an introduction to Orlando and then a talk with our director and writer, both of whom are cis white men. It speaks volumes. Because at the end of the day, I'm disappointed. I'm really disappointed because we don't get much representation on our stages. And Orlando hurts me even more because this should have been a trans story and from its casting, it showed us that it was aware of trans people and how this story was important to us. And yet it just doesn't. It doesn't tackle any of these issues. It doesn't explore it in any kind of way. I'm going to compare this for one second to a show that played at the Garrick two months ago, and that is My Sons Are Queer, But What Can You Do? This is a story that is Rob Madge's autobiography in a way. Obviously, Rob Madge is a non-binary actor, but the show itself is not about being non-binary. It comes up in little ways because obviously that is their lived experience and that is who they are and it's going to play some part into their autobiography, but the show is not about that and yet that feels more like a trans story than this show that has a trans lead that has a story about someone's gender changing. That one that is about someone dressing up in their living room feels more like a trans story than the trans story. And the fact that these play at the exact same theatre is just so ironic and so upsetting. We honestly deserve better. I'm just tired at this point. I'm tired of getting my hopes up for some good trans representation and being slid this. I'm tired of really great trans theatre getting two weeks in the West End. I'm really tired of seeing people demonise us and not even see the industry that says it's open to us treat us in a fair way and give us the stories that we deserve to see on stage. Orlando is so disappointing because it is such a missed opportunity of a show. There is only one moment in this show where transness is mentioned in any way. It's a very fourth wall breaking show and the only time that transness is mentioned is when Deborah Findlay's character turns to the audience and says, boys and girls, oop, and everyone. The first time this happens, it's fine. It's, it, it's a nice little like, oh, they're trying their best and trying to get it right. And then it happens again. And again. And again. And at that point, later into the show, when this show that has promised us trans representation, that has given us a trans lead, but has not explored it in the show in any way, shape or form, keeps giving us this and having the audience laugh at it, it feels insulting to us. Because it's not a trans story. They haven't even tried to make it a trans story. They've just cast a trans person. But if Emma Corrin was not famous, they would have not cast them in this show. This is the most disappointing show of the year for me. I can only give it one star. I can't even say that it's saved by a good script. I can't even say that it's saved by casting. I can't even say that it's saved by direction and staging because all of it feels like it has no aim, no vision, no direction. All of these really interesting ideas are only skimmed on such a surface level. The casting promised us some really interesting and modern view on this story and it just doesn't deliver. As a critic, I'm disappointed. As a theatre lover, I'm disappointed. But most importantly, as a trans person, I am disappointed. But what do you think? Obviously, theatre is subjective, and if you did enjoy Orlando, I'm glad that you could. I wanted more.
Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribing. It really helps me out, it helps out the channel. There's some links to some other videos on screen right now, but that's it for me today, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.